In this video, we're going to be looking at the proof of an arithmetic sequence. There's a couple of reasons why we're going to be doing this. It is a popular exam question, so you could be asked to write down the proof, and that could be a standalone question. And the second reason why we're doing it is you should understand where everything comes from. The, a very famous mathematician, when he was in primary school, used to always finish his work early, and the teacher, to try to keep him busy, asked him to sum up all the numbers from 1 to 100. So sum being a posh word for plus. So the teacher wanted him to add one with two, add on three, add on four, and keep going. But the little boy was very clever, and he found a really cool way to do this quickly. What he did is he wrote all the numbers from one to a hundred forwards. So imagine he kept going to get to a hundred, and then he wrote the same number, so he's written them forwards and backwards. So he started at a hundred here, and then he went to 99, 98, 97, all the way back to 1. And what he noticed was this. Each time you add it in reverse, you get the same answer. So what he said then was when I add the numbers from 1 to 100, well, technically he's added them twice, right? Because he'd have added 1 twice, 2 twice, 100 twice. So he said, Two times my answer, so two times the sum I want to find, is equal to 101, and I'm going to have that 100 times, because he'll, he will have added them 1, 2, 3, 4. So then he said twice my number, or, or the sum I actually want to find is 101, which is what he got when he added the first and the last, the second with the second last, the third with the third last, etc. Times by how many terms I had in my sequence divided by two. So all he actually needed to do was calculate 101 times 50. So you can do 101 times five and add a zero. So 100 times five and one times five, so that would be 500, that would be 5. So 101 times 5 would be 501, and then times that by 10. So you can get 5010 as the answer. And he did it so quickly, and his primary school teacher is amazed. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is this is exactly the same process that we're going to use to find the sum of an arithmetic sequence. What we're going to do is we're going to start by writing the sequence forward. So the first term is A. The second term is a plus d. The third term is a plus 2d. So to remember this, we always know that the number of d's is one less than the term number. And if you think about it, the second last term must be a plus m minus 2 times d. And the last term, so this would be one before the end, the last one must be a plus m minus one. The very last term must be a plus m minus one times d. So we've written the sequence here forwards. Now we're gonna take exactly the same sequence and write it underneath backwards. So we're gonna start with the last one. I think I'm probably gonna put Maybe I'll put the D first. It doesn't matter if you put D at M minus 1 or M minus 1 times D. The second last one. Each time notice that the number of D's will decrease by 1. And we'll go right the way till that would be the first one. Do a bit of a gap here. And that would be the second one. So I've written the first one with the last one the second one with the second last one, etc. But you will notice that each time the answer we, when you add them together is the same. It's 2a plus d times m minus 1. So if you check that here, a plus a will be 2a. 1d plus n minus 2d's will be m minus 1. Or 2d's plus m minus 3d's, again, m minus 1. 
And just like when the little boy added the numbers in a hundred, the answer will be the same the whole way along. The sum that we want to find, or twice the sum that we want to find, must be n times by 2a plus d times m minus 1. We know that each time we add the first and the last, or the second and the second last together, this is our answer. We know that there are n of them, but that gives us twice as many because we've used each term in the sum twice. So to find the sum, all we need to do is divide by 2. You might want to use a big square bracket to separate it out like this. And this is the formula for the sum of an arithmetic sequence. A sum is what we get when we add all of the numbers in that sequence together. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you some practical or numerical examples for this. Thank you.